Welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John. Our victim today is this uh, Benjamin Marauder, a Generation 1 in 177 caliber with the factory barrel. And our project is to rebarrel it with this Viroc or HW 20 caliber barrel and use it for field target competitions. Well, before we get too far into it, we probably ought to take the air out. So we're going to use the uh, degassing tool that came with the gun. And air comes out the uh, front. This is how we're set up in the uh, clossing lathe and we're going to, like I say, we're going to take this outside dimension down to fit into the receiver uh, and we want that outside to be concentric with the bore otherwise you get some misalignment and it might not uh, feed the pellets properly, that type of thing. And so what we're using to do that are these uh, Brownell crown savers. and. They look, uh, they look like this. They're pointed with a 60 degree angle on that end. And then this has also been drilled at a 60 degree angle. So it fits your center on the back side and fits uh, concentric into the bore on the uh, front end. And what that means is we can use these uh, brass crown savers and take a slight cut here and then we can indicate off at the outside of the barrel and uh, it'll be concentric to the bore. And we're going to do that at both ends because we're potentially going to do something at the uh, crown end or muzzle end to fit a support uh, for the shroud. So we're ready to go. I'm going to uh, take some practice cuts here. We're going to cut it off somewhere in this area, but I want to play with this material and see how it machines before we get started here. And then uh, I'll show you how we go about it. So this is why we're turning uh, this down just a little bit. Uh, and just this is practice at this point. We haven't cut the barrel, but we did turn it down, uh, taking a skim cut of about 10 thousandths and you can see uh, we cleaned this area but we didn't touch the rest of this which tells me that um, the bore is slightly uh, out of concentricity so we need to take a little bit more until we get um, you know the barrel truly concentric uh, the outside concentric with the bore
Our bolt. We started out with a. You remember we took out the 177 bolt, and I happened to have a 22 caliber bolt, and so we um, we annealed it. And we pulled this out. This is basically just a press fit in there. So we'll get some some uh, Loctite or something and press that back in, and hopefully it'll stay. Um, but we machined. The neck here down to a little under uh, 200 thousandths or 20 caliber. We, we took it down to 197 thousandths and it fits in the barrel uh, pretty easily. And then we had to cut this groove for the o-ring and uh, we decided to put the o-ring on the uh, bolt itself rather than uh, on the inside of the barrel just because I hate changing the o-rings in there. So to do that, um, I pulled out this old Sheridan uh, bolt that has a space for an O-ring, and we measured that, and then uh, went and got went online, got all the different dimensions and stuff for a O-ring of this size. It takes a number zero zero four, and uh, we cut the uh, slot for the O-ring there. So we should be ready to put the bolt back together. And after that, um, you know, everything should fit together pretty well. We've got the uh, front piece here, and we're going to use the same shroud uh, that we had on here before. say this was a successful project. I'm pretty happy with the accuracy. Um, luckily we found a 20 caliber pellet that shoots well and in fact it was the only pellet that was available uh, in 20 caliber so uh, we kind of lucked out there. A good thing about this project is that I already had all the parts. I had the 20 caliber HW barrel that I got years ago for a project uh, that never panned out. So it's been sitting around here for a long time and I was glad to be able to use that. The bolt, uh, the 22 caliber bolt I already had and we can get a replacement from Crossman if we ever wanted to convert back to uh, 22 caliber. So uh, no permanent damage to the receiver. A few things we didn't show um, in the video. It got kind of long. One is the work we did on the lead here uh, on the breech end because there are small uh, uh, burrs that come up when you drill for the transfer port 
And I didn't show that. If we do barrel work in the future, you know, maybe we can get into that a little bit more. Um, the choke on the barrel, when we turn down from uh, the 16 millimeter down uh, to fit the air stripper here, so we could reuse the shroud. Uh, when we turned down the, the uh, muzzle end, we lost our choke. Basically, the barrel expands slightly as you remove material. It loosens up, I guess you'd say. So we had to um, re-choke it. And we used a method that uh, a friend of mine up in Oregon, Mark Gravel, uh, mentioned to me one time where you uh, heat the barrel uh, and then just the muzzle end, heat it up and then quench it. And it's a process that's used to harden uh, metal, but it also um, puckers it up just a little bit. So now we got our choke back, and I think that that helps with accuracy. So the last thing I wanted to mention is about timing the barrel. And basically the, the question is, where do you drill your transfer port? How do you select out of the 360 degrees of the barrel? Uh, where's the top and where's the bottom? That's a pretty important question because most barrels will tend to shoot high or low or left or right depending on uh, where they're oriented. So what some people do who work on barrels is, is time the barrel. And that means you shoot it, you rotate it, shoot it, you rotate it, and you find that point where the gun shoots uh, low or high, preferably low, but doesn't shoot to either side, because if it shoots to the side, you're going to have a hard time with your windage adjustment at different uh, distances. Well, we're, we don't have the ability to shoot this before we drill the transfer port. So uh, what we did is we used a laser and uh, found the low point in the barrel, and then mark that as the uh, position that we were going to uh, drill the transfer port at that uh, location on the on the barrel. And that's just kind of a homebrew version of timing on these things. But if you have a better uh, way of doing it, why I would be interested to hear it. So drop me a an email or put a comment in the comment section. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to taking this out and shooting field target, and uh, thanks for watching.